Okay, so coming into child's pose. And if you're just joining us, we're gonna grab a yoga block or uh, like a folded towel or folded blanket. And so in our child's pose, legs, um, I'm sorry, knees, maybe a little bit wider maybe, or, or as wide as feels comfortable today. And then arms reaching out in front of you, forehead reaching to the earth. If the forehead doesn't quite touch and you can't rest, you can either stack your hands and rest your forehead on your hands, or you can even use your block or your towel. And so just starting to settle into our mats, getting ready for our practice. And I'd like to thank you for making time for yourself today. I feel as though I've been saying it often, however, just with everything that's going on in the world right now, it feels especially meaningful and even more important for us to take time for these moments for ourselves, to nourish our body and move and, and today we're gonna connect with the heart. <clears throat> And um, we're going to invite you to open your heart today. So if you could imagine that I am violating this virtual space and walking into whatever room you're in, and I am standing to your right, and with the index finger of my left hand, I gently touch the back space of where your heart would lie. And with that touch, I've walked away now, I'm out of your space. But with that touch, I've created this golden film beginning to encapsulate around your heart. Your heart glowing now with this, this film. And it's safe and protected. So we're gonna be using the heart um, for expression today. And so I want you to feel as though you can freely give your heart today. But I have created a safe space for you so nothing is gonna come back and harm or hurt or in any way compromise your very vulnerable and tender heart. I just want you to take another moment to just continue to visualize. Maybe you can feel the beating in your chest, or maybe you can, maybe you just have to imagine that beating heart in your chest, but imagine it glowing with that golden sheath, that golden protection around your heart. And just take a moment to picture that. We're going to be using our Ujjayi Pranayama for practice today. So if you would like to get that set up now, we'll find a slight constriction in the back of the throat. And then with the mouth closed, creating a sort of whispering sound with our inhales and our exhales. Kind of sounds like the ocean. It's also referred to as oceanic breath, ocean breath. 
and then setting up a pattern that you that will allow you um, that you can maintain during class today. So maybe that's a three count inhale and a three count exhale. Maybe it's a three count inhale and a five count exhale, but just something that you can use uh, to help guide your practice. So we'll be using the lengths of our inhales and our exhales to guide our movements. And we're gonna also use this breath to steady the mind and steady the heart. So when our practice gets challenging or difficult, it's our breath that we can tap into and kind of hijack our parasympathetic nervous system to create some calm and some ease in these moments of chaos that I'm gonna throw at you today. <laughs> and also using this breath to just keep the mind and the body connected so that the mind isn't wandering maybe when Maybe in our calmer, more stiller moments, the mind will wander, but the breath will help tether us back to that moment. In our child's pose, I'm gonna invite you to, if your arms are stretched out in front of you. We're gonna take them. We're actually gonna clasp and hold onto them behind our back. So clasping hands, letting the hands rest on the low back and then allow your shoulder blades to slide down the back. Take an inhale and then you're gonna lift your clasped hands off of your low back, extending them out long, still keeping the shoulders sliding down the back and lifting up and overhead as far as feels comfortable in your body. <clears throat> so that might be, maybe your hands just stay clasped behind your back. Maybe that's only an inch or two. Maybe they come up far further up and overhead. But just making sure that those shoulders are sliding down the back. We don't want the, the shoulders slunch, uh, scrunching up toward the ears. So shoulders are sliding down the back. We'll breathe here for just a couple rounds of breath. <laughs> Very slowly allow your hands to come back down and resting on the low back and then slowly releasing your hands, allow them to come over to the side. And we're gonna push ourselves up to a tabletop just to pause. This is kind of just a transitional pose, but we're gonna pause here in tabletop. So shoulders stacked over wrists, index fingers pointed toward the top of the mat, and then knees uh, are stacked below hips. Drawing the navel up and in, and the spine is long like a table, reaching out through the crown of the head. Slide the shoulder back, shoulder blades down the back. Mm. Just feel the strength of this pose here and noticing maybe how the front space of the heart feels here. Maybe somewhat protected, even if it is opened. And then how the back space of the heart feels. And maybe that doesn't feel like anything. Maybe that's just observing where that is. And that's perfectly fine too. And we're gonna come into a seat. So sinking your hips back, sitting on your shins, your heels. Um, this is where having the block might be helpful or sitting on the blanket. We're gonna do a reclined, um, a reclined hero's pose. We're gonna get into our hip flexors and our quads a little bit. So if, if this creates any type of tension in the knees, coming up onto that block might be helpful and maybe even allowing the, um, the legs to come out a little bit wider. If you're comfortable sitting on your shins, you can stay sitting on your shins. You can even wiggle your hips in between your feet and allowing your, um, your shins and calf muscles to come on the outside of the legs, or outside of the thighs. So playing around with something that's comfortable, but again, just making sure that the knees are protected, that you should not feel any pain in your knees. If you're feeling any pain or discomfort in your knees, I recommend trying sitting up higher, coming onto a block. So once you've found your position of comfort for the knees, 
we're gonna just slowly start to walk the hands back, maybe coming uh, to uh, the hips. And if you're looking for a little deeper sensation, maybe coming down onto the forearms behind you. And if you need more than that, coming all the way down, lowering further down onto the back. But really focus on pressing the hips up. So imagine like I had a, a string attached to each of your hip points and I was pulling your hip points up and forward. So just trying to get into those quads, getting into those hip flexors, maybe even feeling this in the belly and the psoas. Breathing here. Maybe noticing the heart lifting up. And then if you lower down, just slowly coming back up, coming back to your seat. And then we're gonna come back to our tabletop. <laughs> and setting any props aside. And then from our tabletop, we're gonna walk our hands out. We're coming into puppy pose. So just walking the hands out and then allowing the heart to melt toward the earth. So avoid any dumping in the upper back or in the shoulders. We do want some activation here so that we're protecting that shoulder joint. Um, we're using, we're pressing the palms into the mat. We're rotating our triceps underneath our arms. I'm really pressing here, drawing the navel up into the spine. Maybe letting the forehead rest on the earth if it reaches that far, or maybe even taking your gaze and looking up between your thumbs and maybe even letting your chin rest on the earth. Just take a couple rounds of breath here. And imagine the heart reaching for the earth, yearning to touch the ground. Start to walk the hands back in. And we're gonna sink the hips back, coming into child's pose one more time. And just a reminder here, this is our pose of rest. So if at any time I'm cueing something that doesn't feel good in your body or uh, you lose your breath and you wanna come back here to reconnect with the breath or maybe something else comes up for you in practice and you need a moment to pause and reflect. So I like to call this our wisdom pose. And only you know when the right time is to come into this pose. So exercise your wisdom. <laughs> All right, when you're ready, go ahead and tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, finding our first downward facing dog. Mm, oh, I feel so good this morning. <laughs> if you have a down dog ritual, go ahead and get into that. This is our first down dog of the day. Maybe that looks like pedaling out the feet, bending and straightening both legs. Maybe shifting the hips from side to side or even rolling from high plank to down dog. Mm, feels so good today. Pausing and let's just check in with our alignment. Hands are about shoulder width apart, index finger pointing toward the top of the mat, pressing into all 10 fingers, lifting out of the armpits, shoulder blades slide down the back, spine is long. Allow the navel to draw in toward the spine and knit in those low ribs. Hips are reaching toward the sky. Feet are about hips distance apart. So that's about a fist and a half between your toes, finding a slight bend in the knees, and then heels are reaching down toward the earth. Maybe lift all 10 toes and let them rest back down. Mm. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward, 
And we'll walk or step to the top of the mat, meeting in forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, spine is long and flat, palms to shins. Exhale, coming back, forward fold, belly to thighs. Inhale, rise up, reach your hands to the sky, upward salute. Exhale, hands come down to heart center, mountain pose. Inhale, sink the hips back, reach the arms to the sky, chair pose. Draw the knees behind the toes, sink the hips a little deeper, draw the navel into the spine. We grow tall through our spine, reaching out through the crown of the head. Sink a little deeper, maybe a little deeper, maybe a little deeper. <laughs> Keep going down until you hit the ground and rolling all the way back onto our backs. <laughs> Ollie's coming over to check on me. <laughs> mm. All right, so from our backs, we're gonna bend the knees. Knees are pointing toward the sky. <laughs> I think I'm gonna switch the other way so maybe you guys can see me better. Um, knees are about um, uh, a foot or two out in front of the glutes. I'm sorry, but you have to move. Go ahead. Uh, he's 110 pounds. <laughs> Arms come down by your side. And we're gonna do some, so I'm gonna actually, let me, um, let me demo this for you first and then we'll do them together. So pressing the arms into the mat, I'm gonna inhale and then on my exhale, I'm gonna lift my hips to the sky. So I'm coming into bridge pose. So it's probably gonna be easier to stabilize if you want to wiggle your shoulders underneath, clasping hands, and then holding your bridge pose here, lifting the heart to the sky. And then on my next inhale, I'm gonna reach my left foot forward. Toes can be uh, flexed or pointed, I guess. I'm pointing, but you can flex them if you'd like, or I'm um, pointing. And we're gonna do some circles. So we're trying to keep our hips in line. So we're not sinking down when we're doing these circles. We're going to keep our hips exactly as they are and try to stay stable in, in these motions. So, okay, so let's do it together. So pressing the arms into the mat, take an inhale, exhale, lift the hips to the sky. Maybe find that little shim shoulders beneath, taking that clasp. And maybe this is enough for you and you stay here. If you would like that additional challenge, you'll take an inhale, reach that left foot forward. So your right, I'm sorry, right foot forward. So your right knee is in line with your left and start to make some circles. Trying to keep the hips in line, making sure they're not sinking or lifting. Reach the heart up, press into that left foot. <laughs> draw the navel into the spine. So really find your core here and then switch directions. <laughs> we'll do one more full circle, pause, release the right foot down to meet the left and switch sides. So inhale, reach that left foot forward now, left knee in line with the right knee, lift, lift through the heart and then find your circles. And so these can be as big as small as you want. Obviously the bigger the circle, the more of the challenge, but it's gonna be more of a challenge to maintain your balance, to try to keep those, those hips neutral, really press through that right foot. So planting and staying strong in that right foot is gonna help you stabilize. And then activating the core, drawing the navel into the spine here, staying connected to the breath, switch directions, <laughs> you guys got this, we're almost there. Pause, release the left foot down to meet the right, unclasp your hands and then slowly roll your spine down. Option, you can either rock forward and back coming all the way up. We're gonna meet in high plank pose or you can roll over onto your side and push yourself up meeting us in high plank. <clears throat> Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, lower halfway chaturanga, releasing the knees to the earth for additional support. Take another inhale here. Exhale, lower all the way down to the belly. 
Inhale, reach the heart forward. Exhale, push up and back, downward facing dog. Mm, beautiful. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. Exhale, walk a step or maybe jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, reach the hands to the sky. Exhale, hands come to the heart center. Inhale, sink the hips back, come in chair pose. Hands to the sky, knees behind toes, that navel is drawn in, reaching the heart forward. Sink the hips a little deeper, a little deeper, <laughs> a little deeper. We got this, we're coming down to a seat here. Um, so legs are gonna be uh, long out in front of us, taking your hands and you're gonna plant your hands. Uh, you're gonna, you, you might wanna play around with um, the comfort of this. Um, I like mine pretty close to my glutes, but maybe walking them out, maybe a, a couple more inches behind your glutes, but your fingertips are pointed in toward your glutes. Flexing the feet, pressing the feet into the mat. Take an inhale and then exhale. We're gonna reach the hips to the sky. Lift out of the shoulders, pressing the hips up. Reverse plank. Feeling that heart lift higher. Your gaze can be out in front of you if it feels comfortable to take the gaze up slightly, but just keeping length in the neck and protecting the length, the neck. If you feel any discomfort there, just coming back and maybe looking out in front. And then let's do some dips. So inhale, allow the hips to come down, maybe hovering off the mat. And then exhale, pressing the hips up and forward. Inhale, takes you down. Exhale, press you forward. We'll do two more. Inhale, takes you down. Exhale, lifts you up. Inhale, down. Exhale, up. Was that the last one? Let's do one more. Inhale, down. <laughs> <laughs> Exhale up, you guys are awesome. Releasing the hips back down to the earth. Cross the legs, roll over the knees. We'll meet in high plank, taking a vinyasa. So inhale, shifting forward. Option to release the knees to the earth, lowering halfway now, chaturanga. Exhale all the way. Inhale, cobra. And then exhale, meeting in downward facing dog. Beautiful, you guys. Mm. Checking in with the breath, reconnecting with that pattern if you've lost it through some of our warm up and our core work. And then when you're ready, inhale again. Um, inhale, reach the right heel to the sky. And let's let's open up the hip a little bit here. Bring the knee, open the hip. And then just check to see if any of your weight has shifted between the left or the right arm and just see if you can rebalance that a little bit. So that might mean a little less stacking of the hips and then roll, uh, circling that knee around the hip socket. Reverse directions. Mm, that feels good today too. <laughs> Inhale, reach the right heel to the sky. Exhale, draw the right knee in through the chest and plant the left, I'm sorry, right foot down between your hands. Release the left knee to the earth. So um, option here to stay in this low lunge, if you'd like to, with your hands planted on the earth, if you'd like to come up a little bit higher, taking your hands to your thigh or even reaching your hands to the sky. My hair's getting crazy, guys. <laughs> Check in with your hips. So if your hips have kicked over to the right, see if you can draw them back in toward midline. And then sink a little bit deeper into the hips. So we're really trying to get into that front, I'm sorry, into the back, into your left um, quad and hip flexor here. Breathing. If you have your hands planted variation, I guess you can do it from there too, any variation really, but just start to tuck the toes of the back foot, take an inhale, and then on your exhale, start to press into the ball of the back foot. We're coming all the way up, 
crescent, high crescent pose. Mm. Checking in with our alignment, plugging the right femur bone into the hip socket, the left femur bone into the hip socket. So we have this kind of spiraling effect of the hips. So hip points are going toward the top of the mat. Lift that left leg high to the sky, shoulders stacked over hips. Sink a little deeper into that right knee. Arms reaching to the sky. Good guys. Reach your heart forward and clasp them behind your back. Allow the shoulder blades to slide down the back here. And then we're gonna do a little exploration. So release that clasp, but see if you can still find the strength to keep your hands together. So we're gonna, we're, hip palms are open, but you're reaching, you're pressing toward your hands toward one another. So maybe they touch, but what I'm more focused about is that activation of pressing, opening the heart, reaching the heart, breathe. <laughs> Release that, bring hands to heart center. Start to um, bend a little bit more into that left knee. And we're gonna step all the way up, coming into chair pose. I know, I know your right leg is cooking. Mine is too, guys. We got this. Just a couple breaths in chair here. Really lift through the, get tall in the spine. Draw that navel in. If you can, sink a little deeper into your chair. And then exhale, come all the way up. Woo. Mountain pose. Oh, that felt good. <laughs> Coming into uh, uh, yeah, warrior three here. So hands at heart center. Bend the, le the left, uh, start to shift weight into the right foot. Bend the left knee and draw the left heel in toward the left glute. And then we're going to start to shift forward. Coming into warrior three, allowing the torso to reach down toward the earth and then extending that left heel long out behind you. So this might be helpful to have the block if you'd like to place the block underneath your hand for support. You can even place your hands on your thigh for some support or to challenge that balance, hands at heart center. But really extending out through that left leg. So that left leg is really strong, active and lifted and you're reaching out through the left heel. Toes are pointing down toward the mat. Long, in a long line, the crown of your head. Then inhale, and then exhale. slowly come back up. Allow the left foot to meet the right. Inhale, reach your hands to the sky. Exhale, keep a slight bend in the knees, folding forward at the hips, meeting in a forward fold. And we're gonna take hand under foot pose. So just slightly lifting up your toes and allowing your hands, maybe if I demo it this way, actually taking your hands and allowing your hands to slip underneath your feet. Toes are pressing into your wrist. Your Lead to thigh, you need a really deep bend in your knee and that's okay, that's fine. Slide the shoulders down the back. If you can, lift the hips to the sky. Just lifting them toward the sky. Let the crown of the head be heavy. Keeping distance between the shoulders and the earlobes. I call this romance. Let the shoulders have longing. <laughs> through your sweet, tender earlobes. <laughs> Release your hands to the earth. Plant your hands, step back. Option to take your vinyasa or just meet in downward facing dog. When you're ready, let's do it all on the other side. So inhale, reach the left heel to the sky, bend the knee and, pa and, and open the hip, pausing, checking to see if there's any weight that's shifted between the left and the right arm. And then go ahead and take those knee circles around the hip.
Inhale, reach the left heel to the sky. Exhale, draw the left knee in through the chest, planting the left foot between the hands. Allow the right knee to release down to the earth. And then enjoying this nice stretch into our hip flexors and quads. So staying in this low lunge with hands planted, or maybe you come up onto your thighs, or even reaching the hands to the sky. Whichever variation feels good for you today. But just being mindful of where that hip goes. So if the hip is kind of kicked out over to the left, see if you can draw that back in toward midline. I have sassy hips. My hips are always moving out, of, uh, out outside like that. So I, have, I call them sassy hips. Enjoying that stretch in the left, I'm sorry, in the right, I did on this, that too, on the right um, quad and hip flexor. <laughs> Maybe sinking a little bit deeper into the hips. Flex, um, go ahead and tuck the toes of the right foot behind you. Start to firm up the right leg and then pressing into the ball of the right foot coming all the way up into our high crescent pose. And then just checking in with the alignment on this side. So plugging that left femur bone into the hip socket, plugging the right femur bone into the hip socket, feeling that spiraling effect into our, um, in our torso, lifting the right thigh to the sky, shoulders stacked over hips, We'll start with arms reaching up to the sky, sink a little deeper into that left knee. Breathe. Reach the heart forward. And then the same thing that we did before. So taking that class, so clasping hands, let's start with the awkward clasp. So the, um, the opposite um, clasp that you tried the first time, allow that to allow your shoulder blades to slide down your back. Hold that for a breath. And then taking that other exercise. So releasing the clasp, shoulders still sliding down the back, but then really trying to press the hands together here. Reach the heart forward. Lift from the upper part of the back. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Inhale, hands come to heart center. Bend into that right knee. And then we're gonna step all the way to the top of the mat coming into our chair pose. A few rounds of breath here. Really fisting. <laughs> Getting tall in that spine, sinking a little bit deeper into the hips if you can. You can inhale and slow eyes up. Oh gosh, it feels so good. <laughs> Mountain pose. <laughs> All right, begin to shift weight into the left foot. Take that right foot and kick it into the right glute, shifting the torso forward, allowing the torso to drop down toward the earth, and then extending that right heel back toward the back of the mat. Foot is flexed. Left toes are reaching down toward the mat. Spine is long. Again, imagining a really long line of energy from the crown of the head all the way out through the heel of the, foot, the right foot. Take another inhale and then exhale, slowly bring the right foot back in, allowing the right foot to meet the left. Inhale, reach your hands to the sky, coming into a forward fold, slight bend in the knees, hinging forward at the hips, and then taking that big toe, I'm not big toe, um, uh, hand under foot pose. If you would like another variation of this pose, if you just want a ragdoll, clasping opposite elbows, you can do that. If you wanted to do a clasp behind the back as well, you could, you, you could take that, allowing the shoulders to stay long down the spine, sliding down the, the back, and then your uh, hands reaching up and overhead. Kind of the head is heavy. Whichever forward fold variation you'd like to take here, you are welcome to take it. Breathe. Enjoying this little pause. Maybe checking in with the heart here. We've been moving on an exhilarating morning already. <laughs> so maybe it's a little easier to feel the heart. Release whatever hand variation, whatever 
fold and clasp variation, plant the hands, step back, high plank pose. And then taking a vinyasa or meeting us in downward facing dog. How's the breath? Let's take a cleansing breath together, releasing any air for that's currently in the lungs. Take a deep inhale and fill up the lungs to the top. Open mouth, exhale, let it all go. Beautiful. All right, we have a little bit of work left and then we're good for the day. So um, back, coming to forward fold at the back of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come up slowly, one, one vertebrae at a time, rolling the spine up one vertebrae at a time. Head comes up last, drawing hands to heart center. Begin to shift weight into the left foot. And we're gonna draw the right knee up and in line with the right hip. Pause, single leg mountain. Take an inhale. And then on your exhale, you're gonna step all the way forward, coming into high crescent pose. And then taking a bit of choice here too. So we're gonna root forward. And what variation that you want with your arms here. So maybe you want a cactus. Maybe you like that clasp. Maybe you're tired of back bends and heart openers this morning. Just staying right here in your crescent hands at heart center is perfectly fine too. Think a little deeper into that right knee if you can. Take an inhale and then exhale, bend into the left knee. We're gonna come all the way up to single mountain now. We're standing on the right leg. Left knee comes up in toward, in line with the hip. I'm just gonna step back so I don't hit the wall. With hands um, at heart center, start to draw the left heel into the left glute and the knee comes in line with the right knee. And then taking your hand, your left hand, you're gonna plug your left elbow into your uh, left hip. And your hand's gonna come out to your side like, like, like you're a server or a waiter, like you're holding a tray. And then you're gonna allow your hand now to come back and see if you can clasp the inside of that left ankle. Yep. And then a hand can stay here at heart center if you'd like. If you'd like to challenge your balance a little bit more, maybe reaching your arm up and overhead. Shoulder slides down the back. Start to kick, kick the left foot into the left hand. And then if you'd like to, uh, to further your, your uh, challenge your balance, start to reach the torso forward, allowing the heart to drip down toward the earth. Still kicking that left foot into your left hand coming into our dancer's pose. Noticing if that left shoulder has kind of opened up to the left and see if you can draw it toward the top of the mat. So really allowing that, that contact with the foot to press into your hand and open your heart. Reaching the heart forward. Take an inhale, exhale, release everything down slowly, coming into your mountain pose. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky. Exhale, hinging forward from the hips, forward fold. We're gonna take a little forward fold twist here. So knees can be bent. We're gonna plant the take, the, take the hands and walk them over to the right. And fingertips can be tented. Maybe they're planted all the way down onto the earth. And then we're gonna straighten the left leg and bend into the right knee, just getting into that left side. Mm, that should feel good. Breathing here. Be walking the left hand out a little bit further. Just exploring. Making this feel good. Enjoying this moment of pause. We only have the good news or the bad news. <laughs> so we only have one side left. 
And we just have one side left. <laughs> Locking your hands back towards center, planting the hands, stepping back, coming into high plank pose. Option to take your vinyasa. We meet in down dog. When you get into down dog, check your breath. Reconnect with the pattern if you've lost it. And when you're ready, walk the hands back to meet your feet coming into forward fold at the back of the mat. And then slowly rise up, coming into mountain pose. Bring hands to heart center. Begin to shift the, shift the weight into the right foot. <laughs> Draw the left knee in line with the hip. Take an inhale and then exhale, stepping all the way forward, coming into high crescent. Yep. Beautiful. Reaching the heart forward and then just taking a back bend variation of your choice. The arms can be cactus. Maybe you take reverse prayer. Shoulders should be nice and open. Mm. Send your love out into the world today. Share your magic, that magic that your heart carries for you all day. Share that with the world today. Release any arm variation and then start to bend into that right knee and then stepping all the way up single leg mountain, right knee in line with right hip. Looks good, okay. Drawing the right heel in toward the right glute and then allowing the right knee to drop down toward and in line with the left knee. Taking your right elbow, plugging it into your hip, hand comes out to the side like, like a server and then dropping it back, clasping the inside of that right ankle. Begin to kick the right ankle into your right hand. Option for the left hand can stay here in heart center or you can reach it up toward the sky. You can just stay here, or if you'd like to challenge the balance, begin to reach the forward, tilting the torso toward the earth, still kicking into your right hand, noticing if the right shoulder has opened up now to the right, and see if you can draw that right shoulder to be in line with the left really opening up the shoulders, the chest, reaching that heart forward. Slowly start to come back towards center, release the clasp of your foot, right foot comes down to meet left. Inhale, reach your hands to the sky. Exhale, slight bend in the knees, hinging forward at the hips, forward fold. And I'm taking that twist to the left, walking the hands over to the left, finding a slight bend or a deep bend into that left knee, straightening the right leg. Mm. Enjoy this nice stretch into the side body. Moving the spine here. We've done a lot of sneaky spine work today. Maybe walking the left, right hand out a little bit further, just getting deeper, or even just exploring, seeing where sensations feel good here. Walk the hands back towards center, plant the hands, step back. This is your last vinyasa. So if there's anything extra that you want here, you wanna push out a couple extra chaturangas today, if you'd like to hold your cobra or up dog. And then when you get to down dog, walk through and we're gonna meet in a seat. I'm gonna check and see how we're doing on time. Perfect. All right, so from your seat, let me give you a couple of options. So we've done a lot to open the hips and open the shoulders. 
So sometimes that can be a lot emotionally. Um, I'm sure you've heard this, we store a lot emotionally in our hips. And then it, with our heart, we're giving so much to the world. So sometimes it's really important, I mean, and not sometimes, all the time, it's really important to balance that, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, we're gonna close off and come back within ourselves and hold and cherish that beautiful energy. So um, or I'm gonna I'm gonna cue shoelace pose. So left foot, left heel is gonna come in toward the right glute, and then the right heel is gonna come in toward the left glute. Now that might not be how your um, pose looks, how your body looks. So adjusting again your legs. If this is a lot on the knees, this is again where the block or your blanket will come in handy, and you can get a little lift out that way, and that'll make the pose a little bit. Um, easier on your knees and more accessible, and you'll still be able to get into your hips and closing off these hips here. So once you get into your pose, grow tall through the spine, and we're gonna take eagle arms today. So allow your arms to come out in front of you, and we're gonna wrap uh, the right arm over left, and you can either take a clasp of the shoulders here, you could stay here if this feels good, Allowing the shoulders again to slide down the back and just closing off like this. Or you can draw your forearms together or palms to palms touch. And then with the shoulders sliding down the back, begin to reach the elbows up and out. So getting into the back side of the shoulders. And if it would feel good to do a fold here, if you would like to grow tall in the spine, and then on your exhale, start to fold forward, allowing the, the, the elbows to come down, maybe hooking on top of or in front of the knees. That's just an option. That's a very deep stretch into the hips. So maybe you stay just as you are. Breathe here. Very slowly, if you fold it forward, start to rise up. Slowly begin to release your arms and then start to release your legs. Maybe planting the feet in front of you, placing your hands behind you and then tick-tocking the knees back and forth for a moment. And then switching sides. So right heel comes in toward left glute first and then left heel comes into right glute. Arms come out in front of you, left arm on top of right, option to clasp opposite shoulders, bringing forearms together, or taking full eagle palm to palm. Sliding the shoulders down the back and then lifting the elbows up and forward. If you'd like to explore that um, fold forward, inhale, growing tall on the spine, and then exhale, folding forward slowly. They're allowing elbow to knee to touch or maybe hooking the elbow over the knee. So these back bends and heart openers can, they usually do one of two things for people and I'm always interesting to hear what they do for you, but can either be very energizing, giving you energy. And I think of it like a, someone who's a, um, oh my gosh, what do you call it? An extrovert, someone who really enjoys connecting and giving and being social. So it's energizing for an extrovert. So that's how I think of that. Or sometimes it can be very depleting, giving a lot to people. And as an introvert, right, this is the opposite. Uh, giving is important, connecting with people is important, but it can be depleting. And so in either of those cases, it's important to pause after those experiences. So after we do these heart openers, it's important to come back in, close off and reflect. Slowly release. If you've folded forward, coming back up, slowly releasing your arms, release the legs, 
Maybe finding that tick tock from side to side again. <clears throat> and we're gonna come all the way down onto our backs. And I'm gonna let you choose your twist of choice. So I personally would probably do coming into reclined pigeon. This just feels more closed for me. So crossing right ankle over left thigh, shoulder. feels too far away you can use that block or even just modifying the placement of your heel on your on your body oh I love you too buddy that would be a variation of choice just to kind of close off a little bit but if there's another twist that you would like you are welcome to take that twist maybe it's an easy twist As we approach the end of our practice today, I invite you to bring in and start to cultivate some gratitude for your practice. Gratitude for the work that you put onto your, into, um, onto your mats today. And just showing up for yourself so that you can serve the world. Start to come back to center. If you took that pigeon variation that I was demonstrating on crossing the right heel, allowing the right foot to plant down to the left, crossing the left ankle over right thigh, arms come out to the side like a T, take an inhale, and then exhale, releasing the left foot down toward the earth on the right. <clears throat> This is our very last posture before our final resting pose, Shavasana. I just need to stay connected with the breath for just another couple moments. And when you're ready, bringing everything back to center. You took the pigeon variation, releasing the left ankle. Maybe tick tock the knees a little bit, drawing the knees into the chest. And then when you're ready, taking any version of Shavasana that you like. So maybe today you want to close up a little bit. So we traditionally take laying on our backs and the heart is still reaching up to the sky, arms are out to the side, and we're open. We gave a lot today, so maybe you want to take Shavasana on your side or maybe even on your belly. Um, if you have a blanket, you can place the blanket underneath your hips for a little bit of lift. And then planting hands in front of your face, stacking your hands and allowing your head to rest on your hands. <laughs> I will let you enjoy these moments of Shavasana in peace. And when you hear my voice next, it'll be time to come out.
you are ready to start to come back, maybe finding some gentle movement in the body. That was a short shavasana today. Um, so if you need more time, please feel free to take a couple more minutes. And if you would like to finish in a seat, I have a couple of short, our usual loving kindness affirmations for our Tuesday morning metta practice. So if you would like to join me in a seat, coming up onto your side and pushing yourself up or staying just as you are in Shavasana. And because we did a lot with the heart today, um, it would be traditional to take Anjali Mudra, hands to heart center. However, I'd like to invite you to embrace your heart and put your hands over your heart today. And then finding either a gentle soft gaze out in front of you or even closing your eyes. And so I'm going to read to you three affirmations and I'm gonna repeat each of them. I'll say them each three times. And I invite you to say these aloud and by speaking these, they become your truth. So if you keep them within, that's perfectly fine if you're not comfortable saying them, but I do invite you to speak them out loud. Let them be your truth. So um, I'll, read, I'll read the first one. I'll give you a moment to say your, that affirmation and then I'll go move on to the next one. And we'll do that two more times after that. So I am worthy of infinite and unending compassion. Love rises from my heart in the face of difficulty. I am centered, peaceful, and grounded. And we'll do that two more times. I am worthy of infinite and unending compassion. Love rises from my heart in the face of difficulty. I am centered, peaceful, and grounded. One more time for each of these. I am worthy of infinite and unending compassion. Love rises from my heart in the face of difficulty. I am centered, peaceful, and grounded. If you would like to finish with hands at heart center. I just continue to feel so blessed and honored to be able to share and just be part of your journey, but to share my journey with each of you and to sit in this seat and guide a practice and to guide an experience for you in the mind and the body. So I am deeply, deeply grateful for your presence in my life. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Namaste. Mm-hmm.